You begin to whisper to Jesus. Does that shake anything? No. Now let me ask you another question. If you begin to uh, get a little excited and begin to shout out, Jesus, yeah. is that going to shake something? Yeah. If you begin to roar like a lion and go, oh, Jesus, yeah. that could shake something. If you begin to move a little bit, that could shake something. Oh, movement moves the spirit of God. Here we go. Praise right now.
Now you need to jump and shout like that while I'm preaching. <laughs> That'll help me out. You think you disrupt me? I get to scream and shout preaching too. You want to turn teaching into preaching? Yes. Do that while I'm preaching. Amen. Oh, you'll see me get all fired up. And, ah! <laughs> Woo, you see me get out. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Welcome to New Hope Pentecostal <laughs> Church where there is hope for the hopeless. I had a time in my life where I felt hopeless. That there was no chance for this brother. There was nothing that was going to help me. Nothing was going to get me out. Nothing was going to get me through. I tried everything but Jesus. Mm -hmm. I tried everything but Jesus. That's how we usually work. We'll try anything before we try Jesus. We'll, we'll, we'll try to get rid of all the other options. And when nothing else worked, then we come to God. Right. Aren't you glad that you have a God that doesn't say, oh, well, you should have come to me first. Why did you come to me first? He stands there and says, it's about time. It's about time you showed up here. Come on and give me a hug. Aren't you glad we have a God that treats us how some of us treat each other? I'm not talking this church. I'm talking about people in general. People in this church tend to be nice to each other. I like that. Yeah. Praise the Lord. I think we need to be nice to each other. I think we need to love each other in the Lord. That's what the Bible calls for. Praise the Lord. Pentecost Sunday. Now I'm going to preach on the end time still because it's related. Because see everything in the end came from the beginning. And this all here, this New Testament stuff we're doing all started with Pentecost Sunday. And it's going to end with the end times. So what we need to know is the same thing that caused people to be saved on Pentecost Sunday... It's the same thing you got to do now in order to be saved. Amen. It hasn't changed. Praise God. There's just going to be an end game. Eventually there's going to be an end. And you better make sure you have entered into this Pentecost life before you come to the final judgment of Christ. You better have gone through the blood. Yes. You better have been gone through that water. You better have been gone through the repentance. And you better have been going through that receiving of the Holy Ghost, evidence of speaking in tongues. Can I get it? Amen. amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. It's all connected. You can be seated if you like. Praise the Lord. I'll have you stand again when we go to the reading of the word of the Lord. Uh, I'm, I'm going to try to get us to that. You know, we're a young church. So, you know, some Pentecostal church have been around for a while. They do it and some don't. But, you know, we've been, we've been around the block for a little while now. It's been four years since we started this ministry. But we're still young. I'm not going to think that, you know, just after four years we've arrived because we haven't. But I, I don't know about you, but I'd like to stay on this journey until Jesus comes. That's what I'd like to do. I'd like to stay on this road until Jesus comes for his church. Praise God. Um, we have some announcements. We have on here a chair drive for $3,200. That's how much we have. Uh, I made some calls last week. And it turns out that we only need... 3,500 in order to uh, order our chairs. If we order by the 24th, or was it the 27th? It was the 24th. I have it written down. If we order by then, we'll have our chairs in time for our four-year anniversary services. Yes. Woo! Now you're probably thinking, yeah, Pastor, you're going to try to get that $300 out of us. There's only 32 here, and you said 35, and uh-huh, here he comes. That's, you, I know some of y'all thinking that. Those are people who don't show up on Wednesdays. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> because on Wednesday I made this announcement and not intending to collect that 300. But someone rose their hand and said, Pastor, I got 100 towards that 300. I didn't even ask. I swear. I got witnesses. I got witnesses. I said, somebody, I got 100. Somebody says, oh, I got 20. I said, well, we're freeze, baby. Get a pan. Get a pan. And before you knew it, $300. So we got it. We got it. We got 3500 Oh, praise the Lord. We're going to keep the better of the pews, put those in the back and put 100 chairs, 50 on each side, probably something like that, and the rest will be pews. Now, next year, we're going to do the same thing, and we're going to get another 100 chairs, and then we won't have to worry about chairs anymore. Uh, praise God. We're working on getting the air conditioners. The uh, last fundraiser gave us enough to get one and a half air conditioners. Uh, I'm doing some research to see if I can find something a little less expensive than what my wife found. Uh, but it looks like that might be the better price. So we're, we, we can go back to Albuquerque on the second we're going? 
June 2nd. Uh, and we're going to pick, pick up at least one, maybe two. Put one in the back, one in the side, and take that swamp cooler and put it in the fellowship hall. Somebody said, praise the Lord. Amen. It's hot in there, boy. I tell you, cooking and selling and, oh, everything we do in there is hot. And it's right from now until the end of summer. So uh, I'm looking forward to having a full room of people on free food and fellowship and not seeing pools of sweat on the floor. <laughs> All right. So the yard set that we were going to have on the 18th, we did not have that. We still need you to bring your stuff. We have a bunch of stuff in there. I've got a bunch of stuff in my truck. Uh, we're, we're definitely, definitely going to have that yard sale on the 1st. Okay, we're definitely going to do that. So go ahead and get ready for uh, the things that we'll talk more about it on Wednesday, but go ahead and get ready uh, to start bringing your stuff to the church so that we can have that, so we can raise enough money for the other uh, we're going to buy wait, one and a half and one and a half is three, right? So we'd like to get three air conditioners, one in each of these windows, one back there, and then move the swamp cooler. Let's get ready to sneeze. <laughs> don't you hate when they don't come out? You know how to get them out? I don't know how this, meant, how this relates to church, but I'm going to tell you anyway. If you look at the light when you're getting ready to sneeze, I should look that way. If you look at the light, it just draws it right out and you sneeze. Um, don't ask me why. But I always get this kind of, unless you sneeze 20, 30, 40, 50 times, then it hurts. But one's good. Okay, back to the announcements. I'm sorry. Um, camp meeting is coming up. Uh, we're going to have uh, some ca campsites available. I've got two or three on reserve. I've got to call Brother Bostic from the ALJC. Um, uh, he is the district superintendent right now. Um, he is going to reserve some, some plots for us. I've got to make sure he's done that by request of Sister Tiffany. So we're going to have at least one to three camp sites or ability to put tents down. If you're interested in camping out, you can still get a meal ticket for $40 for kids, $80 for adults, and there is a bathhouse to shower. So you can camp out and go to camp meeting all at the same time. Uh, and it costs you probably $500 less than it would cost if you paid for everybody to come in the cabins and everything. So um, come see me if you're interested in going to camp meeting and we'll hook you, if you want to camp out we'll hook you up with Sister Tiffany. We need to continue our prayer for Sister Victoria. Uh, I hope that you are doing that right now. We need to continue that. The Harrison family which is Susie's mom and dad and of course that's Susie's sister. We're praying for answers. We're praying for uh, the ability to know one way or another. God, show us something because uh, it could very possibly go on that we never know. And we don't want that. We want to make sure one way or the other that we know. And we're going to ask God to give us that information. Anybody believe God can do that? Yeah. I know he can. Praise God. I'm, I'm believing and waiting for that miracle. Uh, we've got a Bible study going on Oak Springs. I'll tell you more about that later. Uh, I've got some unspoken requests that I want you to bless the pastor. Are you praying for your pastor? Come on now. I had, I had, I had brother, brother Eric pray for me today and oh bless God it felt so good. He just was so uh, kind to his pastor. I appreciate that. Uh, I needed that. I had a rough morning. Uh, but the Lord's got a way of picking you up. The Lord's got a way of saying come on, come on. Let's go. Let's go. Let's move. That's what daddies do, right? That's what fathers do when their children are going through. Something. They say come on. You're going to do it all right. You know, I'm so grateful to have a God. My, my low points in my life are so short. Hour here, hour there. There are people who go through days and weeks and months where they just can't get their head out of the, out of the sand. Uh, but I'm grateful to have a God that I don't have to worry about that. And we need to also pray for those that can't be here right now. Oh my goodness, there's uh, all kinds of graduations and all, I mean, I'm shocked we have this many people. Praise God. We got graduations and all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, we only had 31 in church or 30 something on church on uh, Wednesday, which is a little lower than usual. But I'm grateful. I'm so grateful for the kids. They've been acting much better. Can I get an amen? amen? Our children have been sitting and listening and not throwing things around. We've been doing more effort to get the kids in line. And I believe that's good for the Lord. Amen. We had men's fellowship yesterday. It was so much fun. It was just me. Well, my wife's laughing because she, she was one of the men's yesterday, I guess. No, she was our chef. She was our chef, right, brother? It was me, uh, Brother White, and Brother Eric Zeno, and we just, you know, those who were able to make it, we sat down, we went over some uh, scriptures about Elijah and Elisha. Uh, the Lord gave me a sermon right out of it. I preached it to them, they're going to hear it twice. Uh, <laughs> but bless God, then my wife pulled up a chair and sat down with her food. I said, girl, this is man's fellowship. But since she cooked, you know, I figured <laughs> she cooked for all of us. It was awesome blessing. Thank you, sister, for cooking for us. 
It was a wonderful time. And then I had Brother Eric and Brother, um, Brother White, they were able to help me. I needed some help. I, this is one of the things I'm going through. I'm going to just share it to you briefly. Going through a rough time because, you know, I'm so busy with the church and with my work and with my kids. And, you know, we're trying to get this house ready so we can take pictures of it to put it online for sale. We want to put it on the market. And you got you to make it nice first. You can't just have it ready and say, hey, buy this. You got to make it nice. And so we're just so, we, we try to make it nice. We made it worse. You know, because then you got boxes everywhere. You're trying to pack stuff up. And I'm looking around going, oh, Lord, help me. But me and Eric, Brother White, they were willing to help me. And I've got a garage that every time I've gone camping or done anything for the last year and a half, just goes in the garage. Like on top of each other. And so you couldn't even walk. I mean, you really literally, you had to hold on to things and <laughs> to get through the garage. You can run through my garage now. You can, you can run side to side. I got all this room because he went through the whole thing. I haven't been able to do this for a year and a half. And these brothers came over and helped me. We cleared out the whole garage, put everything away, put it, got a couple storage, we spread everything out. I might even actually get to my weight set. Praise the Lord. I got no more excuses. Babe, I can't find the weights. They covered. They're buried. So I'm excited about the fact that they were willing to help for men's fellowship. Uh, but I will tell you, next time we have men's fellowship, I have ordered uh, some shooting stands, some target stands, and some targets that have, remember I told you about the hostage scenario, you know, where they turn one, uh, uh, one of the silhouette targets sideways behind the other one, and then you, you can shoot the one that's behind it. I've actually got targets with a picture of a guy holding someone hostage. So we can shoot that way. It's just going to be a lot of fun. Uh, we're going to do some bottles and we're actually going to buy one of those eventually, one of those target things where ping, they flip and you shoot them. Uh, so we got a little thing going. We got a little gun club in our church. I don't know what's going on. Uh, but we're going to have a good time on the next men's fellowship. Women's fellowship was today. How many did you have? We didn't count. <laughs> but we had a time in the Lord. <laughs> About 13 or so, and they had a time in the Lord. That's what my wife said. A time? She's she been hanging out with a black guy too long. We had a time in the Lord. She used to be white. I don't know what happened to her. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm just as excited. To, you know, I was telling these guys yesterday, I am so excited for this church. We have a men's fellowship, a woman's fellowship. We've got a board. We have got uh, outreach director. We've got ushers. We've got a men's fellowship director. We have got all these things that we just didn't have before. Yes. And it's bringing organizations to the church. It's bringing structure. And I'm just so grateful for everybody who does anything for this church. Thank you so much. <laughs> Praise God. Let's move on. We're going to, is that it? Did I miss anything? Okay, we're going to take up an offering right now. Yeah. Huh? Oh, yeah. I'll do that after. We're going to take, Sister White, if you can. If you would stand. You should do it before. Huh? You should do it before. Should we? Okay, that's a good idea. Oh, that's probably a good idea, huh? Okay, while you're standing, Sister Maya, will you come to the front, please? Before we take up offering, I'm going to have Brother Eric Zeno pray for the offering. Just give him a warning and prepare himself. He's just been, the Lord's been moving on that man. I'm going to tell you right now. Praise God. Sister Maya, if you would come up. That sounds funny saying Sister Maya to my daughter. <laughs> she has a testimony that she'd like to share with you. Go ahead, right up here. <laughs> you forget? I gave my birthday money for cheers, and then... For church what? Cheers. Tell them. And it came right back to me. All right. <laughs> I don't know if you caught that. <laughs> if, you put a, if she's singing, she does better. I guess she's a little shy. Uh, what she's trying to tell you is uh, that she had birthday money on Wednesday. She was one of the ones that said, here, I want to give to the $300. And she put her $20 in for the chairs. And she's, or both of them already given 30 in the past. They both bought one chair. But she said, I want to give my money. And she bought in these people. We got to 300 Well, we got, I got a, um, on Friday, we were on our way to Albuquerque. 
and I got a uh, PayPal uh, donation for, from our website. We have a page where you can donate to the church. And uh, I got $20 from somebody. And I'm like, babe, who is this person? I have never met. Oh, that's the sister from Brother Bibb's church. She saw online on our Facebook that, that Maya had given her $20. And she sent Maya $20 to replace that $20 that she gave to bless her for her giving. I don't know about you, but that's fun. That is some fun stuff. God is just a, God is a giving God. God will return your blessing even to a six-year-old. Praise God. Amen. Praise the Lord, Brother Eric. If you pray for the offering. You want to take this? Praise the Lord. How many of you are thankful to be here today? You may be thankful to be here. Can we just lift up our left hand or right hand and just give God a wave offering? Thank you, Lord. Can we uh, double that offering and just give him a uh, uh, good prayer march to the walls as we give him thanks and uh, uh, thank him for this offering that we're about to give. And we thank you, Lord. If you can send our hands out here, thank you, Lord, for this offering. Ask you uh, bless it and bless those who are given, Lord, and those who give a thankful offering. We just thank you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You may not know, but that was tough for him. <laughs> but he did a good job. Praise the Lord. Uh, we're going to go ahead and have you march towards the walls and come down to the front as we do our offering march. Wind is blowing again. The wind is blowing again. Just like a day of penny. school may now be dismissed. Your kids, just make sure you pay attention and follow direction from your teacher. Praise the Lord. Obey your elders. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Mm -hmm. The rest of us, if you'll open up your Bibles to Daniel 12 and 2 and stand to your feet for the reading of the word of the Lord. <clears throat> Those that are standing are doing so in honor of this mighty word. Praise God. 
Daniel chapter 12, verse 2. We're going on to the second lesson of the end times preaching, which I'm calling the end time prophecies. Is end time one word or two? It's a good question. I have to look into it later. <laughs> but we are going to move on with the lessons. I'm excited about getting back to it. <laughs> uh, we had to take a little break for Mother's Day, but I'm not going to cry about it. Praise the Lord. Daniel chapter 12 verse 2 reads as follows, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life, and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, or the heavens, and they shall turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. Verse 4, it says, Be thou, O Daniel, shut up the words and seal the book, even to the time of the end. Many shall run to and fro, and, in, and knowledge shall be increased. Let's pray. Jesus, we thank you today for the ability to have wisdom, to be able to have brightness of light through your spirit and your power. We thank you, Lord, for the ability to have some understanding about prophecy. We may not know everything. We may not understand everything. But we could understand some of the things that stand out. And that's what we'll talk about today. Give the church an understanding of the urgency of our behaviors today as a result of knowing that the time is near. Knowing that what we learn today, that the modern nations that are already here, to show us that we are in the end time. Let that become clear and let us, let us act accordingly in our behavior. In Jesus' name. And the church said amen. Let's clap unto the Lord one more time.